short today. Keep you moving and grooving. Boom! I'm looking forward to this. So full body conditioning. What you may need, if you haven't got access to lots of equipment, what you might want is a towel. I'm going to use a towel and a resistance band. But don't worry if you haven't got access to these things. Hopefully you've got a towel. Hola, como esta? YouTube, I think you're live. If you are on YouTube, just give me a little wave. So yes, full body conditioning today. We're going to go through a warm up to start with. And then from there, sorry, yeah, are you guys live? So yes, we're going to do a warm up to start with. Keep that nice and short. We're then going to go into a full body bit of a circuit. I'm going to be looking at push. We're going to be looking at pull. Bit of core and then legs as well. Ben Morlock, yo! So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be pairing both isometric holds and then we're also going to be looking at rep work as well. Isometric holds are really beneficial. Say, for example, you're stuck in a movement pattern or you want to uh, develop specific strength in a, in a uh, movement pattern, then that can be really beneficial. But also when we don't have access to lots of weights when we're at home, what you can do is add strategic pauses throughout the workout, which will then mean that you're having to work hard. You're also building more time under tension. Coach Dan, my man. So anyway, <clears throat> I'm Coach Owen, for those who may or may not know. Uh, so I'm one of the senior coaches at the School of Calisthenics. So hopefully take you through give you a little bit of my flavor but it will be school of calisthenics based so the idea with this is that we're going to move i'm not going to do loads and loads of um, detailed explanation but just remember that this will hopefully tie in linking that kinetic chain building a much stronger movement patterns and then from there you can get strong and then apply this especially during this lockdown time when we don't have access to weights so just to recap push pull core legs we're going to be combining both um Isometric holds and then reps. When we get into it, we're going to be doing four rounds of everything. Okay, but I'll, I'll preface that before we go. So to start with, let's get warm. Let's get the wrist warm. So again, anyone who struggles with elbow pain, and I've got a little, uh, a few niggles at the minute. So by getting the wrist nice and warm and doing a bit of movement prep, we can hopefully have a better workout. So from here, palms flat to the ground. And what I'm going to do to start with, I'm just going to lean left and right. It doesn't have to be massive to start with. Left, right, and then from here, I'm going to add a little bit forwards and backwards. Forwards and backwards. One more. And then from here, I'm going to add them together. So left, forwards, right, backwards. So just turn it all together now. So all parts of a compass. Gradually increasing that range. Good, one more. I feel that in my fingertips. Good, nice. What we're going to do now is the opposite. So back to the hands. So wrist flexion. So back to the hands, fingertips facing you. Small circles, forward and backwards. Left and right. One more, and then we're going to start putting those together. So small circles. Gradually get bigger. Good, nice. Final one of these, so palms facing east and west now. So same principle again. I'm gonna just go left to right. Gradually increase, increase. Oh, that feels really good. Really good on my wrist. Then from here, a little bit of forward and back. So I can feel this in my shoulders almost like a pseudo planche. And then I'm gonna do it into a little circle to start with. Doesn't matter which way you go, feel free to change it up. Gradually increasing. Good, nice. Shake it off. So from here, what we're gonna to look to do. So we're gonna go into a plank position to start with. So I'm thinking about keeping these arms nice and straight, driving into the ground. Again, you can be on all fours if you want. That's okay. If you want to increase that lever length straight away, you can do. But what I'm looking to do now is warm up the uh, uh, posterior. So 
When we're in this chain, glutes on nice and tight, abs locked down, like we're going to take a punch. Glutes on, abs on, and I've got to use straight arms, pushing the ground away. So from here. Initially, I'm just going to hold this position, making sure I'm not sagging down. So this would be an isometric hold, so holding for time, okay? So push the ground away, glutes on, abs on, 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, keep pushing the ground. Five, four, three, two, and one, good. We're going to go straight into the reverse of that. So now it's going to be more, um, so it's shoulder extension. So anything in front, shoulder flexion. Now we're going to go into shoulder extension. So remember, we can make things easier in calisthenics by shortening the lever length. But what if you feel quite confident? So fingertips point, pointing away. Heels on, abs on. So if you're here, I don't want to be sagging. I want to be peeling those shoulders back. Glutes on. About 10 seconds. Nine. Nasal breathing as much as you can. Eight. Seven. Six. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good. So we're going to flip back onto the front. And by the way, if you've got if you've got boring socks on, like I have, get them off. <laughs> Jacko don't like boring socks. Right. So from here, what we're going to do is go back into the front position, but we're going to go into a pike. So. I'm going to be in that plank position that we're in to start with. Maybe you're on your knees. <coughs> but we're going to go from here. So arms beneath shoulders. But from here, I'm going to walk my feet in. I'm going to be in this pike position. Okay? So we're going to hold this position, and I'm going to push away. So I'll show you that a little bit closer to the camera. So I don't want to be just hanging out. I want to be driving away so that my shoulders are going up towards my ears. I'm really forcing that ground away. I don't want to just be passive in this, hanging out in the shoulder girdle, driving away, okay? So into this static or isometric pike position. So plank position, walking the feet forward so my bum goes nice and high. If you're struggling with your hamstrings, put a slight bend in your knees, okay? So from here, nice and high, pushing the ground away. 10, 9, 8, keep pushing, 7, Six, five, if you find that easy, load more into your toes, into your shoulders, sorry. Four, three, two, and one. Good. So I don't know if you saw there. Again, with the guys' leverage, it's quite easy. So all I did was just shift my weight forwards, so more weight was going into my shoulders by lifting up onto my toes. If you wanted to make that harder, what you could do is put your feet onto a sofa or a chair just to lift you up. But again, we're still in this warm and just in a preparation phase. Yeah, I'll, I'll move back as far as I can. Again, I'm a bit limited to space. So, what we're going to do now, uh, so we've done a little bit of push, pull, anterior, posterior. So finally, we're going to warm the side of the body, okay, the, the lateral sling, obliques. So it's going to be here. We're going to do both sides. So pushing into the ground. So you can either use elbow on the ground. So notice how I'm lying all in one line. So my shoulders, hips, into ankles. So I can either push up here. And I'm making sure I'm tucking that belly button in again. I'm going to make it harder. Extend that lever. Again, for those of you who feel confident with that, we can go into a, a bigger position. Okay, so find your level. And we're going to go for 10 seconds. So pushing into the ground, shoulder above wrist, control, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, keep sucking that stomach in, 3, 2, 1, good. We're going to go straight into that other side. So pushing into the ground, again, with the guards at hand position, I like to go about 45 degrees to my body. You might feel more confident going forwards or turning it all the way out. I like to go about 45 degrees, pushing into the ground. Again, whether you want to go from the elbow 
Again, making sure, main thing, shoulder above elbow, pushing into the ground. From here, if I want to make it slightly harder, drive in up, make a big position. We're going to go for 10 seconds. So find your position, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, keep holding that stomach in, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Good, slowly down. Good guys, good. So, that's a little bit of a warm up. So we did front of the body, back of the body, side of the body. And then from there, as we go through, um, what we're gonna be doing now is going into sort of um, four rounds. We're gonna be working for 30 seconds each, each exercise. So from here, the first round, we'll be doing isometric holds. So building on this theme of static strength, second round push or reps, third round back to isometrics, fourth round reps. So isometric reps, isometric reps. So four rounds. Within those rounds, we're gonna do push, pull, core, legs. Again, don't get too confused. If you're struggling to keep up with what I'm saying, don't worry about that. What I'll be doing is telling you and letting you know all the way through. Cool. So to start with, push we're going to go into that plank position so those of you who did it on your knees to start with try and go for a slightly harder position those of you who did the harder position what you can do is lift your feet up at the back again depending on what you've got access to but don't worry too much so first position is a push we're going to be doing a plank we're going to go for 30 seconds hope you're all ready so remember good technique screwing those shoulders in that then winds up the stabilizers in the shoulder Boom, elbows pointed backwards, create a really good position. Right, 30 seconds. So find your position. I'm going to go for this full plank. If you want to make it harder, one leg off, two leg off, doesn't matter. Or one arm, one leg. So we're going to go for 30 seconds. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Well, remember keeping that core tucked in, pushing that ground away. Wrist between uh, underneath the shoulders, it's 10 seconds gone. Good, halfway. If you're lifting one foot off, change legs. 10 seconds left. Keep that good position all the way. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. And because we're after quite a metabolic effect, when we get into this, we're going to keep rest quite short. So from here, we're going to go into a pull. Now, I know during this time that you might not have access to a lot of equipment. So if you've got a resistance band, you can use a resistance band. Again, depending on what sort of strength, we're going to go into a pull motion. I know Jacko went through no equipment pull versions the other day. But for this, you're either going to want a resistance band or a towel. So we're going to be here. And what I'm looking to do is put it into like a um, Australian pull-up, Aussie pull-up, or a row position. So I'm going to be setting and I'm just pulling against my feet, okay? So whether you're a towel or resistance band, a skipping rope, anything that you can pull against, that'll be, uh, that'll be fine. Or a jumper, fine. Right, so we're going to go for 30 seconds. So remembering this, setting my shoulder blades back and down. I don't want to be pronated. I want to be... Uh, protracted, I would have been retracted. Okay, so 30 seconds. Ready? Three, two, one. So I'm pulling, set myself, shoulder blades back and down, pulling against this towel. I'm not trying to pull muscle off bone, I'm just trying to set myself, pull in, really fire up these back muscles. Good, keep going. Halfway. Good, really set that scapula back, shoulder blades in your back pockets. 10 seconds left. Six, five, keep going. Four, three, two, and one. Good. Nice, guys. So, again, what we're trying to do, I'm just trying to give you options. We're going to go through lots of other variations that you can do for a pulling based motion. Obviously, during this time, you don't have access to a gym. So, just trying to give you options that you can potentially do at home. So especially if you haven't got like access to a pull-up bar or a set of rings or anything, 
you can still get like a load or activation through that posterior chain, through the back scapula, uh, without having to go very far from your home. Cool. So now we're going to do core. So one of the main things that we're thinking about with calisthenics is that translation of force all the way through the kinetic chain. So we need to have strong core because that's the gateway between the torso and the lower body. So to start with, we're going to be in a V-sit position. If you want to make it harder, extend the legs. But to start with, don't worry too much. I'm going to be sat in like a boat position, if you're familiar with yoga. But the main thing is I'm keeping that core engaged like I'm going to take a punch. And I'm going to be sat back, okay? So we're going to go for 30 seconds. Obviously, if you want to make it harder, sit further back, but don't compromise the lower back. What I don't want to see is you buckling through that back. Okay, keeping that engaged, sitting back in this position. Okay, 30 seconds. Let's go, guys. Three, two, one. Good. Hold that position. Neutral neck. I don't want to be craning or or slumping down. Again, you probably feel this in hip flexors. Hold that position. Approaching halfway. Good. Nasal breathing as much as possible. Bonus points. 10 seconds left. Good. Good proud posture. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Nice, guys. So you can feel that the whole body's having to work there. You're potentially shaking a little bit. Slight bit of oxygen uh, debt. But really good, uh, nice little exercise there. Cueing a lot of things that we need. Obviously, we're going to go through and make it harder in a bit. Cool. So from here, final one for the first round. We're going to do a squat. So remember, good squat technique. I'm going to go 90 degrees. So from here, I'm really thinking about the same thing we do with the shoulders. Screwing the hips or knees, and what I don't want to do is collapse in or collapse too far out, like bow-legged. What we're trying to do, keep a nice posture. Again, glutes on, keeping everything upright. I'm not trying to slump through my back. So we're going to go for 30 seconds. If you want to make this harder, what you can do, you can do it on a single leg. Okay, so to start with, I'm just going to do this, but if you are doing a single leg, I'll tell you uh, halfway when to change, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So 30 seconds work, squat position, three, two, one. Good, so ideally I want to be just hitting parallel with my glutes, so keeping form in line with knees. Again, when you want to hold your arms, you can do this up against the wall if you want. I can really start to feel that burn now, screwing the knees, or the, uh, the ankles in, but without turning my knees out. Good. Good, hold that position, keep going. That's past halfway if you want to change legs. Keep working. Five, four, three, two, and one. Woo. I can feel that in my legs. Yeah, absolute burner, right? <laughs> Shaking, boom, yes, JD. So that was round one, okay? So hopefully we've eased you into some of those positions. You've got half an idea of what's happening. So I'm gonna take you through. In round two, we're gonna be working for reps. So first round, isometric hold. Why is isometric hold good? Because that allows you to build strength in certain positions where you are weak. Say for example, you're weak in a muscle up, then we'll program static strength, We'll program static strength so that when we go to um, pull up or out of a position, I, um, you can build that strength in, in the, the position you're lacking. Yeah, apologies, James. I did shout just past halfway, but uh, I'll make sure I'm on that next time. Uh, yeah, you can swap now, James. <laughs> So I'll be a bit clearer on that as well. I was too busy talking about good technique. Anyway, apologies. Right, so round two, we're going to go for reps. We're still going to work for 30 seconds of time. So this is where, if you're doing a workout at home, what you can do is make a note of these things and then note how many reps you've done. And then from there, try and beat it next time. Okay, so we're not going to do that today, but just bear in mind that is a possibility 
But when you go and do this workout again, try and beat your scores. So reps from here. First is going to be push, and we're going to do good push-ups. So next week, I'll be taking you through a lot of push techniques. But then from there, um, we're going to build on this idea of different pushing patterns. So without further ado, we're going to go to push. So very quickly, if you want to scale push-ups, what you can do to start with, you've got uh, push-ups from the knees. So same thing again. You'll notice certain cues. Elbows tight. Fingertips facing forwards, winding up the stabilizers in the shoulder. And from here, take my knee slightly further back, come down, push up. Down, push up. If you're finding that difficult, what you can do is come all the way down and then help yourself up. Okay? Same goes if you want to make it a long, longer position and you come all the way down, you can come back. So you're just working eccentric. But the main thing I'm thinking about, what I don't want to be doing is elbow out here, okay? It's not a good push-up because that's not very uh, beneficial for the shoulder. And that doesn't translate to things that we want to do in calisthenics, plank, handstands, overhead pushing strength, the handstand push-up. You don't push up here. Out here, you turn elbows in. You push like this, okay? So just bear that in mind. Good push-ups only. We're going to be working for 30 seconds. See how many push-ups you can get. I don't want, want you to let me know below. But the main thing I think about is quality. So don't just be banging them out. I'd rather see a three-second eccentric, which is what I'm going to be doing, so more time under tension, than just like go for numbers, okay? Quality over quantity. Right. So 30 seconds work. Push-ups. If you want to make it even harder, use parallettes so you can go between or a couple of yoga blocks. Three. Two, one. So elbow screwed in, glutes on, all the way down. Three, two, one, push. That's one. Three, two, one, push. That's two. Ten seconds gone. One, three. Three, two, one. That's four. Three, two, one. That's five. Three, two, one, six. Five seconds left. So, three, two, one, and time. So I only did eight push-ups there, but my time under tension was quite high because I was doing like a three or four second eccentric on each one. So that would be loads better than just like bam, 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 going like a jackhammer, okay? So now we're going to go into the pull section. I'm going to show you some reps. So you guys might be familiar with a YTW, but I'm going to show you something else now. Uh, you might know these as, uh, I, I like to call these like swimmers, but they, uh, they look a little bit like um, snow angels. So we're going to be face down or prone position. I'm going to show you what I want to start with. So face down, I'm going to start like I'm doing a YTW. I'm going to bring my hands. I'm going to internally rotate. I'm going to touch in the middle of my back, come all the way around. Back to the front and I'm not going to rest. If you feel that you need to rest, by all means do, but this is really going to fire up rhomboids, mid trap and scapula. So lots of time under tension and I'm going to show you how you progress this on the next round. So from here we're just going to go around but then I'll show you how to make it harder next time. So lots of time under tension so you're going to be lying face down and try and feel free to rest your head on the floor because we don't want to be craning the neck up like this. So I'll show you another one or a couple. So we're going to be here, wide position. I'm not going to touch the ground. Come all the way around, touch into the middle of my back, all the way to the start, neutral. I'm going to internally rotate, touch my back with the back of my hands, all the way around, back to the front. Okay. So hopefully that gives you an idea. Um, anyway, so we're going to be working for 30 seconds. JD, Star Pupil Award, already done it with me. So we're going to go 30 seconds work. Again, keeping that tension, thinking about pulling these, these back muscles and setting them back. We don't want to be slumped forward. Setting them back, really send that um, neurological response to really make them work hard, okay? 30 seconds work. Ready. 
three, two, one. Good, so palms neutral. We're going to start to turn them inside. So palms facing the sky now. Touch my back. Internal. Back to start. That's one. Good, keep working. Good. Back to start. Good. Keep going. Ten more seconds. Good. Really driving those palms up to the sky. Up. Keeping them up, 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 up. Good. One more. Oh, and time. Woo. So that just shows you that you don't need a lot of weight for that. So with this, next time round, we're going to use a couple of tins of beans oh, to, to just create a little bit of overload. So that's like uh, about 500 grams, 400 odd grams. So that's going to make it harder. Okay, so don't worry about that this time. Or when you go and do this at home, you can do that. So... What we're going to do now is a dead bug position. So we're going to work on core again. So remember, push, pull, core, legs. Each round, push, pull, core, legs. But we're just changing whether it's isometric or rep-based. So from here, two seconds. So from here, we're going to be working on the core. So dead bug position. So just a bit of a recap for some of you. Keeping that lower back pushed into the ground, I'm going to take, so um, you can make it slightly easier by going opposite arm, opposite foot, but for those of you who want a bit more challenge, again, constantly keeping that lower back pushed into the ground, sucking that tailbone underneath, I'm going to go double arms, okay, we're going to work for 30 seconds, and go for quality, not quantity, okay, ready, three, two, one, so from here, pushing that lower back into the ground. We're going to open up just as long. I don't want to compromise through the back. Extend, bring together. No rest. Straight back into the next one. Extend, make a long position. Quality. Back to the start. Extend. Good. Halfway. Again, rest that neck on the floor. Good. Final 10 seconds. Keep working. Squeeze back together. Oh. Five, four, three, two, and one. Oh, good. So you notice there that I was halfway through my last rep, but continued. Again, don't worry too much. We are going to extend the amount of working time on the next round. So some of you feel like you could probably do a bit more. Right, so that's our dead bug position. So that's core. Cool. But again, fundamental position that we can utilize when you're in a handstand, you need to think about tucking that pelvis underneath, get good shoulder flexion, and transferring force all the way down the kinetic chain. So that's why dead bugs are a really good exercise. Uh, how did you know my neck was on the floor? Yeah. So again, what we're trying to do is, is relax that neck onto the floor. We're not trying to keep it keep it strained. You can lift it up. When we're doing that V, v sit, obviously you want a neutral neck. But when we're doing a dead bug, we can rest it on the floor. Same with when we're doing those wall angels, um, snow angels, we can do that as well. Cool. So now we're going to go for the full squat for reps. So I'll just lift you up a little bit, YouTube. So for those of you, James, watching you, what you want to do for reps, you can either do a full squat or if you want to make it harder, we're going to do like a dragon squat, like a regress dragon squat. Okay, so that'll be something slightly more difficult for you. So either do a full squat, so we're going to do leg work, squats for reps. So I'm going to do those dragons. I'm going to take one foot behind, like a curtsy, like this. We're going to work for 30 seconds. Hopefully that makes sense. So a couple of options each time. Don't watch me. <laughs> cool. All right, 30 seconds work. Ready? Three, two, one. So I'm going to sit down, keeping this knee pushing into the ground, take that back foot behind. Good. Moving over, driving up. Control all the time, keeping the foot flat to the ground, pushing up from the side, taking this back foot behind. If you want to make it harder, don't put it down. Good. Keep working. That's halfway. Moving over, push up. 
other side, push up, good, five more seconds, control, push, moving over, find that balance, two seconds, final rep, wow, ooh, so it's all right, right, so that's round two, so when we go into the third round, grab a little bit of water, and then what we're going to do is increase the amount of time that we're having to work. So, same format, push, pull, core, legs. But then from there, we're going to increase the time we're working. Back into that isometric hold to start with. And then finally go back into reps. Hopefully that makes sense. Give me a boom if you're ready. Boom! <laughs> cool. Right. Any questions that I can answer in the meantime? If not, we will crack on. My shoulders sound like a bowl of Rice Krispies. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Coach Dan, uh, I know we've sort of spoken before. Um, blood flow. Blood flow is a really um, crucial thing to help bring nutrition to um, ligaments and tendons as well, as I'm sure you know. So by doing something like this, relatively like low level, but it means you can really bring awareness to what you're doing. So you're not just trying to smash out reps, or do it for time. I know we're using time as a quantifier, but what we're trying to do is look for quality work, obviously. Just check there's no more questions. Yeah, flashbacks to jujitsu warm up. I need to I need to get into jujitsu. That's something I really want to do. Uh, 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 right, my shoulder hurts doing shoulder extension, but I can do hundred push-ups. They're two different things, man. Um, so obviously when you do push-ups. You're in front of the body. When you go behind, I've been looking at tightness through the anterior delt, especially if you do a lot of push work. You need to balance that out with pulling work and shoulder extension. Okay, so that's something to have a look at. A little bit of um, self myofascial release around this area to help get uh, the shoulder back into a good position. I'd say that it's a closing of the joint angle potentially um, or a slight impingement. So just, just be mindful of that. We want to always stay away from pain. Right, so we're going to go to round three. We're going to increase the time. We'll be working for a minute, okay? So we did 30 seconds to start with while we're still still getting the engine temperature up. Now we're going to be working for a minute. So hopefully you guys are cool with that. So don't feel like you need to um, do the whole minute. Work for 30 seconds, 45, a minute. So from here, what we're going to do is isometric. We're going to do a reverse plank. So the guy who just mentioned that he might struggle with shoulder extension, don't feel like you need to do this, but it might find it beneficial. So one minute. So shoulder extension, remember we can scale this. So you can be here in a tucked position. You can make it slightly longer or you can go for the full position. Either or, but this is a really good, uh, really therapeutic exercise. Shoulders, posterior chain, bang, putting it in that position. Right, one minute's work. So work out what position you're gonna do, even if you go for the harder position, and then scale it back. That's fine. Ready, in, three, two, one. Good, so shoulders back, keeping the glutes switched on, squeezing those hips, good position. If you wanna make it harder, one leg off. But again, what we're not trying to do is compromise through the lower body. So keeping it switched off, keeping the shoulders peeled back. What I'm not trying to do is hang out here. I'm being nice and proud, big chest, shoulders back. Keep working. Good, approaching halfway. Good, keep working. Shoulders up, neutral neck. I'm not throwing my neck back like this. Glutes on. Good, 20 seconds left. Nice deep breaths, nasal, nasal breathing as much as possible. Squeezing those shoulder blades back. Glutes on. Keep working, keep working. Final 10 seconds now. Good. If you're getting any wrist pain, you can go onto like a neutral, i.e. onto your wrists, or step away. Five seconds. Four, keep working. Three, two, and one. Slowly down. Good, really good. So just increasing that time of the tension. So that's like a push, but it's in a um, shoulder extension. Okay. So from here, 
So another example of that, if you wanted to do a more specific workout to you, you could do a frog stand. So rather than doing like a push in a plank position, if you felt confident, you could be doing a frog position. But again, not everyone, if they just want to do reps and work hard, that's fine. But just know that that's an option. Right. So now what I'm going to do is a W hold. But I'm going to go from W overhead, W overhead. Uh, sorry. I'm going to go W position. But if you want to do, if you've got a resistance band, so we're doing the pull section now. Apologies, I should preface this. So what you can do you can go back to that, what we did originally. Remember, what we did originally is all available to you. So you could use a resistance band, pull, hold that position. Again, not everyone's got a resistance band. You can use that towel, like I showed you. Here, pull. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this W. So I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna lift shoulders up. Sorry, Y. I'm flipping, tripping over my words. Apologies, guys. This I told you about the beans, didn't I? So I'm going to go into this Y position. I'm going to be here, overhead, face down on the floor, and I'm going to be holding these tins of beans. After a minute, these are going to feel really heavy. So you don't need anything really heavy. Yoga blocks, tin of beans, bottle of water, or just hold the um, hold the Y position. Okay, so one minute's worth of work. Remember, you've got the resistance bands you can use if you've got them. Towel you can pull against, or finally, tin of beans overhead. And you are going to be shaking after this. So, one minute. Hopefully, you've got your exercise that you're going to do. Remember, use what's available to you. So, one minute. Ready. So, remember, face down. Core on, lifting through the shoulders. Ready. Three, two, and one. So, resting the neck on the ground, lifting the knees overhead. Keeping good positions all the time. So keeping those tins high. These are going to feel like a lead weight by the time you're done. Keeping those arms up in the air. Neutral position, so palms facing. Keep lifting. They're starting to feel heavy now. Keeping those shoulders up, off the ground. Good, keep working. Good, approaching halfway. Keep them up. Again, if you need to drop them, drop them. Keep working. Good, are you still going? Keep going. 15 seconds left. Good, keep them off the ground. Whew. 10 seconds, let's go. 9, 8, 7, keep them up. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Slowly down. Woo! So that's interesting, right? Uh, sorry, they're not. They're uh, Sainsbury's own. Hines are too expensive during this time. <laughs> Good. So that just shows you don't need a lot of weight in order to challenge yourself. So when you go holding in that position, again, Sean, or if you've gone off to find some beans or something suitable, feel free to do your minute now. I can really feel that through mid-trap, really trying to lift those arms overhead. If you wanted to make it harder, yeah, shaking at the end, right? If you wanted to make that harder, you could turn it into almost a Superman position, so feet off the ground as well. But obviously what I'm trying to do is concentrate on good technique, and this is more of a pull exercise, so pulling those shoulders back, and, and uh, cementing them in place. Boom, pushing into this position. By the end, you should really shake it. And obviously, progressive overload, that's, uh, you know, about 450 grams. You go for something that's a bit heavier, like a 750 ml of water, progressive overload. Challenge yourself all the time. Cool. Tomato, chopped tomatoes. Oh, controversial. Right. What we're going to do now, core exercise. So remember how to start with, we did the core, we did the, the, um, the boat or like a, a regress V-sit. When you're in this position, then we went to the dead bug. Now, if you want to challenge, I'm going to put an L-sit into this. So if you can do an L-sit for a minute, you're an absolute legend. So 
what we're going to do is go for an L sit and then I'm going to go into a standard V sit. So an L sit, I'm going to be on the ground, pushing into the ground, so a little bit of push and core as well. So see how my bum's not touching. I'm going to see how long I can do that for. And then as soon as I fail, as soon as my bum touches ground or my quality of movement starts to be compromised, what I'm then going to do is turn that into just an um, exaggerated V-sit. So this is how we can still get more work in, make ourselves work hard, and then scale it back as soon as we start to compromise form. Okay, so there's always options. Body weight is one of those incredible things that is always a harder variation. So remember, you can do that V-sit, you can do a dead bug, like a static dead bug, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try for an L-sit, like a tucked, regressed L-sit. Um, mate, Sean, you're gonna smash this. So, L-sit. Hopefully you guys are ready, and if you've got any parallettes, little parallettes, they'll help to elevate you off the ground, okay? So you get a little bit longer. So we're going to go for one minute's worth of work. Whatever you're doing, I want you to work for a minute. But obviously, scale it back as much as you need throughout that minute. I'm not going to hold an L-sit for a minute. <laughs> right. Everybody ready? So if you want, again, form technique. With L-sit, I'm going to push into the ground. I'm going to keep my knees nice and tight. Again, if you want to do a full L-sit, you can do but well, that's not going to last very long at all, especially, well, for me, it's not. Cool. Right, top tail sit for me. Ready. One minute's worth. Three, two, and one. We're pushing into the ground, pull off the floor. I'm not going to talk much on this. Keep working. Twenty seconds gone. Twenty five seconds gone. Thirty five seconds gone. Oh, forty seconds. Right. Keep going. Keep working hard. Oh, I know it's hard. I have to go into a boat now. Five, four, three, two, and one. Oh, now that was tough. Well done to everyone there. I'm sure you guys pushed yourself. But if you found that boat position or V sit easy before, notice how by making something a lot harder to start with and then scaling back, still hard. Cool. Very tough. Right, so we're going to go to legs now. Remember, you've got that squat position. <clears throat> so squat, or those dragon pistols that we did before. Someone mentioned before about uh, bush proof. Just managed full time on parallels. Well done. That's excellent work. Really good. <laughs> My arms are really long. My dad's an orangutan. What are you going to do? <laughs> so, legs now. From here, we're going to be going either squat or there's dragon pistols. Someone earlier mentioned pistol squat. Now, um, Jacko went through shrimp squat the other day, so your legs might be in absolute tatters after that. And from here, what you can do is um, put something underneath your heel to lift you up. So if you want to do... pistol squat by all means but remember what we're trying to do is do a volume of work so if you're really struggling to get your first pistol squat I wouldn't advise this for for now what we're looking at doing is making it hard but not impossible so go for a level that you can do that's why I really really like that um, curtsy squat or dragon regression because you're here you're going to come over, you can lift this, keep this knee off the ground, driving up, change legs each time, coming up. Okay, so we're going to do one minute's worth of work on legs. Uh, EK Fighter, can you suggest a good plan to follow for beginners in calisthenics? 
have a search for School of Calisthenics Beginners Program. If not, have a look in my bio uh, at Performance OBJ. There's a link to the free Beginners Bodyweight Program, and uh, it was forty pounds. It's free throughout lockdowns. So have a look in there. Uh, right. So serious, uh, serious note. There's a few of these saying people have got short arms. Now, is it that you've got short arms? Uh, and I'm not, I'm not um, picking anyone out. This is, this is a question dialogue. Is it that you've got short arms or is it that you're not able to generate enough um, depression of the shoulders here to lift my bum off, the, uh, lift your bum off the ground? So if you're barely, if you're not able to push, yes, I've got quite long arms, but it's also the ability to push the ground, create that depression and also lift. Okay, so it's the depression of the shoulders, pushing the way, creates length. And it's also the um, ability to uh, contract hip flexors and core. So it's multifaceted, right? So you could say, if you're struggling with touching the ground here, you can say, oh, it's because I've got long legs. It, yeah, you might well have long legs, but it might be that your posterior chain, your hamstrings um, are super tight and weak. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not um, picking on anyone at all. I'm not saying that's the issue. But well, have a think about what is the limiting factor, okay? So we're going to go into the legs now, back into the legs. Again, any questions, please feel free to put them in. And then from there, I'll try and answer them at the end. Again, cool. This is open format. No such thing as a silly question. Cool. Right. So legs. I'm going to be doing the dragon or the curtsy squat. I'm going to try and keep this leg off the ground. So back here. So working for a minute, remember pick your, whether you want to do just up and down, whether you want to do a curtsy, whether you want to do a full pistol, we're going to work for one minute, okay? I'm going to do the uh, curtsy. So ready, one minute, three, two, one. Changing each side. Big breath at the top each time. Again, trying to maintain my balance. Moving over, drive up. Over, drive up. We will keep working. 20 seconds gone. That's a third of the way. We will keep working again. Trying to create more range each time. Moving over, push up. Past halfway now. We will keep going. Move over, up. Drive up, over, go we'll keep working, 10 seconds, over, up, five seconds. Go on, legs are tied, three, two, one, and one. Good. Obviously, you could have just done a, like a, a 90 degree hold or a hold in the bottom of a pistol. Um, EK Fighter, Performance OBJ. I'll type it in now. It's in it's in the uh, title of this, at Performance OBJ. Or send me a message. Cool. Right, so final one. I know we did reps on that. What you could have done is just held it in the bottom position, but I want to make you guys work. <laughs> your little legs. Mate, you've got your quadzilla. Same, same goes out to you, James. I know that your legs will be massive. Nice one, James. Thank you, mate. Right. Finally, final round. We're going to be working for that one minute again. Ready for this? So we're going to do push-ups again, but I'm going to do a staggered push-up. So rather than just being here, push, push, what I'm going to do each time, I'm going to have one hand in front, down, up, change, down, up, change. Down, up, change, like this, okay? So I'm going to be working for one minute. If you want to turn it into an archer push-up, feel free to do so. But what we're trying to do is just build a little bit more stimulus outside of the um, um, outside of the conventional range. So we're building a much bigger global strength profile. Cool. So one minute's work, push-ups. Again, if you're struggling with your push-ups, don't worry. Just keep perpetually building that strength. 
Used to think they were impossible. I trained hard for three sets. <laughs> yeah, you know. Right. Let's go, guys. So one minute's work, pushing work. So whether you're on your knees here, elbows screwed back, fingertips facing forward, stabilizer switched on in the shoulder, down, up. Okay. Make that longer if necessary. From here, I'm gonna split my hands like this each time. It doesn't have to be massive. It doesn't have to be like out here and out here, like when we did that lizard walk earlier in the week. So, one minute's work. Ready? Three, two, one, let's go. So, I'll split my hands. Down, up, change, change. Down, up. Again, elbows pointing back each time. Glute switched on. Push. Again, you can do archer push ups, whatever you want to do. That's 15 seconds gone. Down, up, change, change, down, up. Good. That front arm is acting like a stabilizer. Uh, halfway. Again, the arm closest to my body is doing the work. Down, up, change, change. Keep those glutes switched on. Down, up, change, change. 20 more seconds. Down, up, change, change. Down, up, change, change. 10 more seconds, let's go. Down, up, working hard. Five seconds. Three, two, and one. Oh, yeah. That's tough. Really working hard on those. Um, question here. If you need to hold your foot during pistols, what does that mean? Now, I've got a question for you. What does it mean? If you can't keep that other foot extended, what does that say to you? It says to me that the compression strength on the other leg to lift that foot is, um, is a bit weak. And it's just something you need to work on. We just need to be honest with where we're at. So no problem. Cool. So pull exercise now. Um, we're going to do reps. If you've got your, if you've got your um, chopped tomatoes or your beans or your black-eyed beans, what else comes in the tin? Soup, a nice tasty minestrone soup. So from here, I'm going to use your bins. I'm going to beans. I'm going to go Y T W Y. So overhead, see that Y. I'm not going straight up. I'm going Y T. W. When I'm in this W position, I'm thinking about elbows go in, forwards, and my thumbs come back like this. So I'm not down like this. I'm here. Y, T, W. So I'm really trying to get external rotation, like you're trying to thumb a lift, crank it back here. So get your beans ready, chickpeas ready, boom. I do like a chickpea. I do like a chickpea. Right. So from here. Get your, get your tins ready. Again, use weight. If you've got weights, use weights. That's fine. <laughs> YTWs. So, one minute's work. Oh, get the clock. Everybody ready? YTW. So, YTW. Cranking those elbows forward. Lifting up. YTW. I'm going to be lying face down. One minute's work. Let's go. Three, two, and one. So, face down. Rest it on the floor. We're going to lift up, Y, T, W, that's one, Y, T, W, that's two, Y, T, W, again, thumb up, elbows down, 20 seconds gone, Y, T, W, keep working through here, making sure, elbows down, thumbs up, keep those elbows off the ground, W, Y, T, W. Oh, I'm getting tired now. Why? T, 20 seconds left. Why? T, W. Good. Final 10 seconds. Why? T, W. Go, keep working. T, W. Good. Last one. Why? T, W. And time. Woo! That was tough, right? So you can probably feel 
that even in that position, trying to get that external rotation, really feel that. You can feel that definitely more on one side um, than the other. Johnny, my man, full fat coconut milk. That must be heavy, right? Because of the fat. <laughs> Messing. Right, my computer's about to die. Two seconds. Technical emergency. One second, guys. Nearly done as well. Nearly, nearly done. And I don't want it to die on this last set. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Right. Final round, guys. Real toughy. So. We're going to do the legs section. Oh no, sorry, we've done YTW, L sit. I'm going to do this time reps for stomach or core, sorry, should I say? Because remember, our core integrates up and down the chain. So, weak link in the core doesn't mean we can move strength up and down. Uh, having a sneak peek later, Richard Edwards, my man. Offset push is easier than archer for me. Yes, so push proof, arch, finding those staggered push ups easier than archers. Yes, 100%. What you can do if you wanted to build your archers, don't go as far. So rather than being out here, just take it and then progressively work further out. <laughs> YTW, two kilogram dumbbell. You absolute savage. Cool. So what I'm going to do now, L sit to a tuck. So I'll show you what I'm after. So remember how we did like L sit here. I'm going to do basically from a boat. I'm going to go out and then I'm going to come up like this. So I'm going to go into a dead bug into an L sit. Right. Again, work to your profile. If you want to do more of like a, a regression of that, you can just extend. Again, I'm not touching. Coming back. Extend. Come back. Extend. Come back. But I'm going to try and go for. A much bigger version, okay? A much longer shape. So remember, one minute's work. <clears throat> remember, we've got two more exercises. We've got core and legs, then we're done. Finito. And that will cap us off at about an hour. So, let's go. We're going to go for one minute's work. I'm going to go from here, boat, into a dead bug, and back up. But again, I'm not trying to do this i'm not trying to like throw and use momentum i'm trying to be as controlled as possible really bring that awareness to everything so one minute's work core then legs then done ready pick your level l sit or regression or whatever you want to do but we're going to do for reps three two and one let's go so boat we're going to extend nice and slow dead bug on a body we're going to come up, good, nice and smooth and controlled, full extension, hollow body, keeping that lower back pushed into the ground we're on the floor, good, third of the way, that's 20 seconds, extend, not resting in this bog position, coming slowly back up, from here, extend it out, good, and then contract, hip flex are getting tired now, that's past halfway, 35 seconds gone, Extend, long body, squeezing back together. Remember, make a shorter shape if you want to make it easier. 15 seconds left. Extend, hollow body, glute switched on, squeeze, 10 seconds. See if we can get two more in. Extend, come back up. Come on, let's get one more in. Extend, keeping the glutes on, full hollow body, back up and rest. Woo, tough. That was a toughie. Reese the Jack, my man. Uh, what time is it over there in Australia? So, final exercise. I'm going to go into those skaters again, but feel free. If you want to do pistols, if you want to do conventional squat, if you want to do more dynamic, you can do a plyometric squat. So you can be down here, big boom, big drive up, 
however you want to do it, okay? So a few options. Conventional squat, remember, making sure we're here, keeping that torso upright, driving up. If you want to do skaters, you can. If you want to do a plyometric, oh, driving up, you can. Whatever you're doing, we're going to work for one minute, and then we are done, okay? So, yeah, my abs are cooked. Uh, Corey's getting so much stronger. Good. Claire Nelman, respect to you. So one minute's work. This is the last exercise. Debrief, and then you can go about your day. Right, let's go. One minute. Boom, let's go. Ready? Three, two, one. Move it over. If you're doing these curtsies or dragon pistols, try and keep that back foot off the ground. Just use it as balance. Good, keeping my foot flat to the ground. Big push from here. That's 15 seconds gone. Again, good technique all the time. Keep it a nice, proud chest. Use that balance, drive up. Moving over. Balance, push. Again, using my arms. If you want to make it harder, take the arms out of the equation so you have to stabilize with the legs. That's halfway. Good. Pushing the ground with that big toe, keeping the heel on the ground all the time. Back up. 20 seconds left. Good, keep working. Big chest. Show from the side, walk, balance, move it over, drive up, final 10 seconds. Go, we'll keep working, guys. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Give yourselves a clap. Well done, everybody. Well done. And again, remember, if you want to continue and do more rounds, feel free to do so. Remember, all we did was just put... A load of beneficial exercise together, push, pull, core, legs. And then we just made it harder by A, changing the torque curve where we're having to display strength in the isometric. Also, we changed it by doing more reps. Um, and then we also increased time. So there's three different ways, but basically more time and attention and just making you work hard. And then beans, a cucaracha, a cucaracha just to keep you guys busy, okay? So really enjoyed that. Thank you so much for joining me. If you've got any questions, please feel free. Chuck them down below. I'll try and answer them now. But again, that was more just to get you moving and grooving. Bit of Friday fun. And again, some of you will find that there'll be weak links in the chain there. So from me, I really appreciate it. Coach Owen, you'll see me as part of the School of Calisthenics coaching staff. Really good bunch of people. Um, and I'm really fortunate to be a part of it. Um, but remember, so to the comment, who, the guy who commented earlier, remember that uh, throughout lockdown, Bodyweight Basics is completely free. So feel free to go off into the School of Calisthenics, download, uh, sorry, access that program. Uh, you can get a free trial of the virtual classroom, but I reckon most people end up staying because it's so good. There's, there's a wealth of information. Also, during lockdown, it's 50% off, so you can join... After you set, you get a free seven-day trial, which is a no-brainer, and then it's five quid. Five quid for your first month. Like, mental. So, so much in there. So, any questions, please feel free. If not, I wish you a great day. Have an awesome weekend. Hopefully, it's been a little bit cooked after that. Ready to smash the weekend and cookies. Amelia, oh, bless you so much. Legends, need more work. Uh, need to work on loads. we seeing progress week by week. Yes, Zahida, yes. And that's the main thing, right? Find something you want to get better at and just progressively, like 1% every day. Just try and get a little bit better. Um, ultimately, that's all we can do. Sometimes we get frustrated by stagnation in progress, but sometimes it's it's good to do slightly different things. Pistol squats are pretty easy on one leg, but nearly impossible on the other. That's interesting, Sean. Yeah, I think most people um, struggle with having a, a stronger side than a weaker side. If you've perpetually done more reps on one side than the other, then you'll find that um, that will will inevitably be stronger. Um, if you've like done football or anything like that, used to kicking the ball, you've done hundreds of thousands more reps on one leg than you have the other. So there will be some carryover. Um, in for a press to handstand by the end of lockdown. Yes, CL Steven 24. Um, I wish you um, I wish you success with that. That's something I'm working very heavily on this year. So. I hope you get that. Uh, I'll just have a quick look through YouTube. Um, yeah, so remember, guys, all of this is available um, for 24 hours on IG. Uh, if not, go on the playlist, School of Calisthenics. Uh, gracias, amigo.
Um, remember, this is on YouTube indefinitely, and you can then continue uh, and utilize this in you know forever beyond lockdown. So don't feel like you're confined to just 24 hours on Instagram. So School of Calisthenics on YouTube. Good. Let's see if I missed any. I think that's pretty much YouTube. Right, YouTube, I'm going to say goodbye. Adios. I appreciate you all. Apologies if I'm not answering the question. I think I've got them all. But by all means, please send me a message. Coach Owen, uh, Owen Jackson. It is performance OBJ. Um, I've left it in the notes on the IG. But if not, I wish you a great day. Yo, what's occurring?